the brain pool curves. The NIST P256 curve is used extensively in cybersecurity, and it is likely that it has been used for the network connection for this podcast. This integrates with ECDH, or elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman, but many worry about the curve and that there might be a backdoor that the NSA could use. Daniel J. Bernstein, for example, rates this 256 curve as being unsafe. So, P256, or SEPT 256R1, not being safe, is not a proof that it has been compromised. We can see that the SEPT 256 key 1 curve, as used with Bitcoin and Ethereum, is also marked as unsafe. The basics of P256 is that it takes the form of the parameters y squared is equal to x cubed plus a x plus b mod p, and where we pick a base point on the curve known as g. The parameters that we have then are g, a and b, and where n is the order of the curve, and is basically the number of points that can be selected on the curve. The way that it works is that we select a base point on the curve g, and then we have a private key, say a, and then we multiply a times that point g. a is a scalar value, g is a point, and we end up with another point on the curve known as a g. Basically, a g is g added to itself a times. The public key is a g in this case, and the private key becomes a. With the Diffie-Hellman method, we have uh, a random value of A generated by Alice, random value of B generated by Bob. Then Alice creates AG and passes it to Bob, and Bob generates BG and passes it to Alice. Then Alice will take her secret A and multiply it by Bob's value, BG, to get ABG. Bob will do the same thing and get the same point on the curve. This is an XY point. So has NIST 256 been cracked? It should be remembered that in most cases everything can be cracked in cybersecurity and it all depends on the resources that someone is willing to put into it. But generally for the current time 128-bit security is secure and that it would take all the energy to boil all the oceans on the planet and many times more just to crack a single encryption, a single elliptic curve key. As P256 has 128-bit security, it is generally seen as being safe from brute force attack. But with the advent of quantum computers, this will not be the case. Overall, at the current time, it is likely to be safe, but we cannot guarantee that. This is the reason that it has been marked as not being safe. The not safe marking on the page from Daniel J. Bernstein just shows that there are a few things that would have helped demonstrate that it was fully safe at the current time and that the curve is not fully optimised. It must be remembered that P256 probably has been used trillions and trillions of times more than any other curve that's been marked as safe. Jerry Solinas. The great debate around P256 comes from the seed value that was used to generate its parameters. This seed value is 0x, c, 4, 9 and lots of other hexadecimal digits. At the core of the debate is that the curve was first defined by Jerry and who at one time worked for the NSA. Selecting such a large prime uh, random value makes it difficult to check the security of the curve and where the seed value could have been discovered to have a backdoor. So unfortunately, we do not have the original proof of the random value for P256 and, and its source has been lost. No one knows if NIST were the ones who actually generated the seed for the curve or not. Actually, Daniel J. Bernstein uh, released an email from Jerry and that hinted that the message was something like give Bob and Jerry a raise or Bob and Jerry rule. The brain pool curves. Overall, in the generation of the elliptic curve parameters, we have randomly generated ones or specially selected ones. 
Curve 25519, for example, has, is one that has special parameters selected for performance and security, but where the brain pool ones are randomly generated. The method for generating randomly generated curves is well documented and includes the seed value used. One problem with this is that we may generate something which breaches an existing patent. This approach is known as nothing up my sleeves and the random seed can be shown to have come from a truly random source. This is like a dealer handing over the cards to a mechanized card shuffler and who randomly shuffles the cards by using a ran truly random source as its seed and then handing the cards back to the dealer. Recently, in OpenSSL 3.2, we saw the integration of random of uh, brain pool curves. We can also see that these curves in OpenSSL range from brain pool P16R1 to brain pool 512R1. 521R1. The curves from uh, P 160 and up should not up to P256 should not be used because they don't have the strength of 120 bit security. So we typically start at brain pool P256 for our minimum security. With SEPT256 key 1, the Bitcoin curve, we have parameters of A equal to 0 and b equal to 7. This gives us y squared is equal to x cubed plus 7 mod p. For the brain pool curves, we get a prime number. I've shown it in the associated web page, a value of a, a value of b, the generator, which is the base point on the curve, and the order, which is the number of possible points on the curve. So we have the base point g, and in this case, G starts with a 0, 0x, zero 0, 04 value. This identifies that the base point is an xy point, and we can split the point up into two parts, the x-axis value and the y-axis value. The order of the curve is the number of points on the curve that are actually possible. These curves can be checked against the RFC 5639 which is entitled Elliptic Curve Cryptography, Brain Pool Standard Curves and Curve Generation. The formal proof of security for the brain pool curves is defined in this RFC and it addresses the choice of seeds and the curve parameters and where we can guard against small group, subgroup attacks. The strengths of the curves can be mapped to elliptic curve sizes and where P256 is equivalent to 128-bit symmetric key security and 3072-bit RSA encryption. For the brain pool curves, 160-bit seeds have been randomly generated and I've outlined these in the associated blog post. From these, it is possible to generate the brain pool prime numbers for P160, 190, 224, 256, 320, 384 and 512. We can check the hex value of the brain point curve by using a simple Python program. The way of showing the methodology of the proof is a no cards up my sleeve approach. Conclusions. Like it or not, the NIST 256 curve still has some concerns and these have been addressed with the brain pool curves. Unfortunately, it would take a great deal to move over to OpenSSL 3.2 and would possibly break many systems. But the main challenge will be to migrate from P256 to the post-quantum equivalent of Kyber. So it's unlikely that the brain pool curves will ever be adopted at scale. Mike Scott outlines his memory of Jerry. I must say, I liked Jerry a lot and on balance, I believe that the NIST curves were more likely to have been designed out of naivety rather than malice. And a blog post outlines, Rumour has it that they are in turn hashes of English sentences, but the person who picked them, Dr Jerry, passed away in early 20, 
2023, leaving behind a cryptographic mystery, some conspiracy theorems and a historical password cracking challenge. Thank you.